Okay. <clears throat> we're in Daniel. Yeah. We're moving up. We're going to try to cover chapters 4 and 5. Chapter 4, Nebuchadnezzar has a proclamation as a result of an event in his life. This event is probably toward the end of his life. He probably got about 10 more years, right? <clears throat> and I think most people think he died around 760 B.C., right? So this may be, it might be around the 760s. We have <clears throat> an interesting chapter. It starts out in the first person, like Nebuchadnezzar's talking. Mm -hmm. It goes to the second person and back to the first person, you know. That's strange. <laughs> you know, and, well, it can't be in the first person when he's a cow. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. So, starting out here, <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, the king of all the peoples, nations, and men of every language that live in all the earth, May your peace abound. Now, was he actually king over all the earth? All of his earth <laughs> that he was concerned about. <laughs> well, this is a, a typical king kind of thing. Yeah. You know, I, I'm the most powerful guy that anybody knows about, so I so, must be king of all the earth. <laughs> that's right. Right. Um, he certainly was a mighty king in his own right. He was. He was actually quite an accomplished guy. Mm-hmm. It has seemed good to me to declare the signs and wonders which the Most High God has done for me. So he's declaring to this entire kingdom what the Most High God, God has done. Messy. Now, so this is in retrospect of what's about to happen. <laughs> he's going to describe why he considers what the Most High God has done for mm -hmm. me. He goes on with how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is everlasting kingdom. His dominion is from generation to generation. Right. How many people today believe this? Believe it. <laughs> that God, uh -huh. his dominion is from generation to generation, everlasting kingdom. In verse 4, I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at ease in my house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream, and it made me fearful that these fantasies, as I lay on my bed and the visions in my mind, kept alarming me. Kept alarming me. Mm -hmm. He might have had this dream more than once. Could have, yeah. Right? This is bothering him. He calls these other goofballs. They can't answer any questions. So in verse 8, he finally... Daniel came in before me, whose name is Belshazzar, according to the name of my God. At that time, his God was Marduk, <laughs> one of those false pagan gods, mm -hmm. right? And in whom is a spirit of the holy gods. <laughs> Daniel could do stuff nobody else could mm -hmm. do, right? And I related the dream to him. <clears throat> so he goes on to talk about the dream. The dream is a, this huge tree that's got everything going on and it feeds and to give shade and takes care of all the people, etc., right? Don't you wonder why at this point Daniel's the last one called in? When he knows Daniel is the one is with the, the one spirit of the gods, right? right. <laughs> you know, I just, it amazes me sometimes how stubborn we can be in our false beliefs. Mm-hmm. How, much, how far God has to go to get our attention. I think he was going to da downsize. <laughs> what, about our, what about our own habits? How far oh, yeah. does God have to go to fix one of our bad habits? <laughs> right? Do we got to get plastered against the wall too? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I do. All right. I did. <clears throat> do we turn to God at last? You know, is that when we finally turn to God, when we finally figure out? Finally, figure out that we can't do it. We can't fix the problem. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. When he's there all the time, right? <clears throat> That's what worked for me. Anyway, suddenly he gets a vision of an angelic being and he tells them, come in, and they chop down the tree. But they cover the stump with iron so that nobody is protected, right? For seven periods of time. 
And <coughs> this, I've seen two words for this disease. That This apparently is rare, but it still happens today, where people suddenly think they're an animal. You know, <coughs> lycanthropy and oh, yeah. bianthropy. You know, I guess by boanthropy, I guess, is when you believe you're a cow. <laughs> and that appears to be what Nebuchadnezzar had. He thought he was a cow. He thought he was a cow. So he asked Daniel to interpret the dream. Right? <coughs> Daniel mm -hmm. says, you know, because he says, you know, you're able for a spirit of the holy gods is in you. You know, what can we do without the spirit of God? Zero. Right. We, can't, we can't do anything. Jesus' is other self, you know, Jesus mm -hmm. says, without me, you can accomplish Zero. nothing. <laughs> right? That's so right. we need the same thing that Daniel's using, and we've got it if we just trust him instead of trusting ourselves, right? <clears throat> and Daniel, verse 19, whose name is Belshazzar, was appalled for a while that his thoughts alarmed him. Okay? He, he respected King Nebuchadnezzar, mm -hmm. right? And he probably worried about what would happen to the Jews if Nebuchadnezzar wasn't king. <laughs> the king responded and said, you know, do not let the dream or its interpretation alarm you. Belshazzar answered and said, I, my lord, if only the dream applied to those who hate you <laughs> and its interpretation to your adversaries. The tree that you saw, which became large and grew strong, whose height reached to the sky, was visible to all the earth, and whose foliage was beautiful, and its fruit abundant, and which <clears throat> was food for all, under which the beast of the field dwelt, and in whose branches the birds of the sky lodge, it is you, O king. Does that phrase remind you of anything? Anybody? When Nathan went to David, oh, you are the man. You <laughs> right? It just hit me when I read that. It just sounded so familiar. It is you, O king, for you have become great and grown strong. Your majesty has become great and reached to the sky and your dominion to the end of the earth. Right? You're a big old powerful dude. Mm -hmm. But for seven years, you're going to eat grass. <laughs> <laughs> Lay out in the dew. <laughs> right? Verse 24, this is the interpretation, O king, and this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the king, that you will be driven away from mankind, your dwelling place will be with the beast of the field, and you will be given grass to eat like cattle, and be drenched with the dew of heaven, for seven periods of time will pass over you until you recognize that the Most High is ruler over the realm of mankind and bestows on it, on whomever, right, he wishes. Who's in control? God. Even in Babylon? God. <laughs> the conqueror of Israel? God. The destroyer of the temple? <laughs> right? Absolutely. It still amazes me that Daniel was so young when he got mm -hmm. the teaching and it stuck so well, right? You know... Verse 27, therefore, O king, may my advice be pleasing to you. Break away now from your sins by doing righteousness and from your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor in case there may be a prolonging of your prosperity. <laughs> Repent. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Right? Well, now we switch. It's not first person anymore. I got a question for you. Where is it at? We just read it. The Watcher. Yep. Uh, what's that? I mean, it says a holy, a holy one coming down from heaven and saying. It's a messenger, right? Okay. In some uh, interpretation, it's an angel. Okay. Right. That comes and gives a message. Right. Where, where are you talking about? It's back in thirteen, uh, verse thirteen. Twenty-three also. Yeah. I just wonder. Okay. Who is the archangel that gives messages? Gabriel. 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 So, might have been Gabriel. Could have been. <laughs> right. In verse 28, all this happened to Nebuchadnezzar, the king. Twelve months later, did he have time to repent? 
Plenty of time. Plenty of time, right? He was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon. Now, does that also remind you of David walking on the roof? Yeah, but he was... Kind of full of himself? Kind of a little peeping Tom. There. <laughs> Happens to see Bathsheba. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, in this case, he could very well have been walking on the roof in one of his three palaces. I printed off some pictures. I'll pass these around. We don't know for sure, but people have given ideas of what they think that the Hanging Gardens mm -hmm. of Babylon, one of the seven wonders Wonder of the world, the world. looked like. But that could very well have been where he was walking, because he built it, right? <clears throat> and he was the most powerful man on planet Earth. Oh, yeah. And you can see how his ego would get out of control, but he was warned. Yes. So now it's been 12 months, and he's up walking on the roof, and the king reflected and said, Is this not Babylon the Great, which I myself have built as a royal residence by the might of my power, for the glory of my majesty. While the word was still in the king's mouth, he hadn't even finished getting it out. A voice from heaven saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is declared sovereignty has been removed from you, and you will be driven away from mankind, and your dwelling place will be with the beast of the field. <laughs> he goes, uh-oh, I had that dream. <laughs> <laughs> right you will be given grass to eat like cattle and seven periods of time will pass over you until you recognize that the most high is ruler over the realm of mankind and bestows on it whoever he wishes so you're king because God put you there not because of you immediately the word concerning Nebuchadnezzar was fulfilled and he was driven away from mankind and began eating grass like cattle and his body was drenched with the dew of heaven until his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. He thought himself superior to other men. Now he finds himself inferior to any other man, doesn't he? Absolutely. Quite a switch. I like the phrase we see in the New Testament about things that they, all this is impossible, but God, mm -hmm. right? Well, in this one we have, but at the end of that period, first person, I, Nebuchadnezzar, raised my eyes towards heaven, and my reason returned to me, and I blessed the Most High and praised and honored Him who lives forever. I think we will see Nebuchadnezzar in heaven. Yeah. Right? Good possibility. <clears throat> he goes on. His dominion is everlasting dominion. His kingdom endures from generation to generation, etc. Verse 36. At the time my reason returned to me and my majesty and splendor were restored to me for the glory of my kingdom and my counselors and my nobles began seeking me out so I was reestablished in my sovereignty. He didn't say, I took it, did he? Mm -mm. I was reestablished in my sovereignty and surpassing greatness was added, added to me. Who did it? God did. God did. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise, exalt, and honor the King of Heaven for all His works are true and His ways just and He is able to humble those who walk in pride. <laughs> Even the great King. <laughs> Absolutely. He can turn you into a cow. <laughs> right? So it's a, quite a conversion. Mm -hmm. Which makes, you know, our prayers for people, like even when Osama bin Laden was alive, as I prayed for him to be converted, mm -hmm. right? God can reach even people like that. Oh, yeah. You know, which gives me more confidence in praying for my lost friends. Like my friend Mark in Omaha that, you know, is, a, is Jewish and I've been praying for him since high school. Mm -hmm. right. <clears throat> my cousin finally got saved this year after 50 years of prayer <laughs> in Des Moines. Right. Right. That's great. You know. <clears throat> so anyway, 
You know, we we can pray. We know God works and can reach anybody. You know, and sometimes He's got to go to extremes. My cousin had to have a heart attack. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Start thinking about, oh, that could have been it. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, Alicia was telling me that Robert in Robin Marsh's speech yesterday, her husband was just saved at 58 years old. 58. He what? Was yep. saved. Robin yep. Marsh's husband. And Donnie's 65. You know? <laughs> it's her second, second husband. Okay. But, I mean, you look at that. That's pretty neat. Chapter 5. 5. New story. New king. Belshazzar, the king, held a great feast for a thousand of his nobles, and he was drinking wine in the presence of the thousand. This is about 539 B.C. Belshazzar, who is now king, is... Apparently the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. There's a great story here because for a long time the anti-biblical crowd would say there was no such king. We can't find anything about Belshazzar. He was not king. Right? Well, about a hundred years ago they suddenly found a whole bunch of old and antiquity stuff, you know, which showed that Belshazzar was king with his father, who was <coughs> Nebonidas, at the same time, because Nebonidas, after about three years of being king, decided to go on a religious expedition <laughs> and never came back. So even though he was, quote, king, Belshazzar was acting king as his son, <laughs> you know. He was the top dog. So later when he says, I'm going to give you the, you'll be the third person in the kingdom, that's what he's talking about. There's my father, there's me, and then there'll be you. <laughs> okay? So anyway, and the name Bell, right? That's the god Bell, right? <clears throat> that's his title. You know, they use the name of the gods in in their names many, many, many times, right? These false gods that they had. <clears throat> when he tasted the wine, he gave orders to bring gold and silver vessels, which Nebuchadnezzar, his father, had taken out of the temple, which is in Jerusalem, in order that the king and his nobles, his wives, and his concubines might drink of them. Now, first off, why is he having a feast? Do you know what's going on right now? You know, the end of the chapter, he gets killed that night, right? The Medes and the Persians are outside the gate. They've already defeated his army. And he doesn't know it? He knows it. Now, they thought that Babylon was impenetrable. You know, you couldn't get through those walls and da-da-da-da-da, and, and they had water supply because the Euphrates River went right through the city, you know, et cetera. So they thought they were good, they were safe, et cetera. You know, and maybe he just wanted everybody to feel good. Maybe he just wanted to make himself feel good. Maybe he wanted to honor all his false gods, hoping they would help him at this point. So he thought it'd be a good idea to go get the vessels, right, from Jerusalem and use them. And as it says, right, they brought in the vessels. They got from Jerusalem. In verse 4, they drank the wine and praised the gods of gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and stone. You know, so here they are trying to praise false pagan gods that have absolutely no power whatsoever, right? While they're blaspheming the true God. So he may have thought he was getting some help, but he wasn't, was he? <laughs> right? Uh, he might have been trying to make Marduk happy, you know, the, the Babylon chief god, because he was in uh, deep doo-doo, actually, <laughs> at this point. <laughs> and when he offers a third of the kingdom, you know, the third ruler of the kingdom, Daniel's like, what value is that? <laughs> You're toast, dude. <laughs> right? 
Suddenly, the fingers of a man's hand emerged and began writing opposite the lampstand on the plaster of the wall of the king's palace, and the king saw the back of the hand that did the writing. So it's on the plaster, next to the light, everybody can see it very plain and easily, right? And it's not just a, an image, right? This is on the wall. The old saying, the handwriting's on the wall, this is where it comes from, right? Then the king's face grew pale. His thoughts alarmed him, and his hip joints went slack, and his knees began knocking together. I think that image scared the bejeebies out of him, <laughs> right? What me? <laughs> He's like, what is this? So he calls in all the conjurers again, the Chaldeans, the diviners, all the goofballs. The intellectia of Babylon offers him again to be the third ruler of the king in the purple robe and the gold necklace and all that, you know. Then all the king's wise men came in, but they could not read the inscription or make known its interpretation to the king. Now, it's written in Aramaic. Mm -hmm. So they probably could read it. They had no idea what it's saying. Now, it could be they had no idea because God decided to block them. Mm -hmm. Whatever the reason, they had no idea what it was saying. The king, Belshazzar, Belshazzar was greatly alarmed, his face grew even paler, and his nobles were perplexed. Verse 10. The queen. Now this was not one of his wives. They were already in the room getting drunk. This is his mother or his grandmother who knew about Daniel. Right? The queen entered the banquet hall because of the words of the king and his nobles. The queen spoke and said, O king, live forever. Do not let your thoughts alarm you or your face pale. There is a man in your kingdom in whom the spirit of the holy gods <laughs> and in the days of your father illumination, insight, and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. Right? <laughs> so he calls in Daniel. The end of 12, let Daniel now be summoned and he will declare the interpretation. So finally they call Daniel. They always go to Daniel last, just like we have a tendency to go to God last, right? Daniel was brought in before the king and the king spoke and told him the story, right? He said, you can get all this good stuff and you be the third ruler of the kingdom. Verse 17, Daniel answered and said before the king, keep your gifts for yourself <laughs> or give your rewards to someone else. You can't buy God's favor. However, I will read the inscription to the king. You know, Daniel's a humble servant. Okay, and also probably about 80 years old right now. And make the interpretation known. O king, the most high God granted sovereignty, grandeur, glory, and majesty to Nebuchadnezzar your father. <clears throat> And he goes on to tell him the stories that we've gone through with Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. You should have known better, dude. <laughs> In verse 22, Yet you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, even though you knew all this. But you have exalted yourself against the Lord of heaven and have brought the vessels of the house before you and you and your nobles, your wives, your concubines have been drinking wine from them, and you have praised the gods of silver and gold and bronze and iron and wood and stone, which do not see, hear, or understand. <laughs> Just hunks of whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But the God in, whom, in whose hand are your life breath and your ways you have not glorified. The only one you got to worry about, and you haven't glorified at all. It always makes me wonder, do we, do we give God the proper honor for who he is? Do we take him for granted too often? You know. <clears throat> then the hand was sent from him, and <clears throat> the inscription was written out. Now this is the inscription that was written out. Mene, mene. Tico <coughs> Farson. And the interpretation of the message, many, 
God has numbered your kingdom and put it to an end. And it was used twice as emphasis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Tekel, you have been weighed in the scales and found deficient. <laughs> I know if God weighed me in the scales, I'd be deficient too. Thank God that Jesus takes care of that, right? Amen. <laughs> and Pharsis, your kingdom has been divided and given over to the Medes and the Persians. Here they come. And Belshazzar gave orders that they clothed Daniel with the purple and put on the necklace of gold around his neck and issued a proclamation concerning him that he now had authority as the third ruler in the kingdom for maybe three hours. <laughs> <laughs> I, I added that part. <laughs> That's right. Because the next verse says, that same night Belshazzar <laughs> the Chaldean king was slain. So Darius the Mede received the kingdom at about the age of 62. You notice he received the kingdom. Again, God made Darius king. Right. Right? Right. You know, going back to the Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the statue, right? Mm -hmm. The gold head was <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar, and then the silver shoulders was the Medes and the Persians, Darius. God is in control even of who the kings are. Yep. So as much as we complain about our president, we haven't replaced him yet, has he? Not yet. Not yet. We can keep praying though, both for him and that he get out of office. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Replaced by a godly man. It'd be nice to have a godly president. <laughs> you know. It'd be nice to know where and what he is. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we'll ever know. Except for the fact that if you read his books, he tells you what he believes. Well, <clears throat> but he doesn't come across that way. Not in his speeches, but in his actions he does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he favors Muslims. Yeah. But anyway, no ifs, no ifs. Yeah. Darius was oh. made king. And it says that in Daniel 9 1, by the way. <laughs> Specifically. So we'll be moving on to chapter 6 next week. Right. Anybody have any comments or questions before we close this up? The words.